Aloha beautiful brothers and sisters. As you know, the topic today is a pretty bold topic. I must say so myself. Cheers. This is a watermelon strawberry vanilla smoothie. All those ingredients blended and that's it. And it's so divine. Wanted to share that with you before I continue. So why on earth would somebody say to wait to have children? And who am I? What is it my business of when a child comes into the world or or what my opinion on this matter of fact is at all in any way, shape or form. So when I do upload videos, it came through and to me in a meditation. And it was, the title was what it is for women to wait to have children. So who, what, when, where, why, and what are we waiting for? That is what I want to share with you. And hear me out, it is a really, I, speaking for myself and through myself, I am waiting to have a child. I know that I will have another child. And if you know me, this says a lot in the sense that, like, when I want something, I want it now. Patience is, has been something that I've been learning really, really deeply in this incarnation. So, I am waiting and I am waiting for the turn of events that is happening on the planet right now. And I'm sure that many of you, if you're watching this, are very well aware of this. So whether you're a man or a woman, you have a partner, you want children, I would like to say, give me a chance to explain why the idea of patience and waiting is a really great idea because of what's happening and what's going to happen. So. This is book five of Anastasia and Eileen Cedar's book series. <sighs> I'll read a part of the back. It says, you will be stunned by Anastasia's vision of the future in which she exposes the extraordinary process by which all ornaments from nuclear missiles to handguns will be removed from the planet in the days to come. There's more. Anastasia paints images of exquisite beauty, abundance, peace, and harmony. Images which will fill you with renewed hope and inspire you to begin creating a very different life for yourself. One far better than anything you might have previously imagined. So, I'll read the first chapter, the first part that I would like to share. We are always in a hurry to get somewhere or get something. There is hardly a single one of us who doesn't desire to lead a happy life, find love, and establish a family. But how many of us will actually achieve our desire? Oh no, there's a grasshopper. Come out, little guy. I saw, I saw something jump in there, but I didn't know. Okay, we'll get you out. Whew. All life matters. Look at our little friend, our little grasshopper friend. Oh, you're so cute. I need to like put him in my mouth to wash my, oh, spit on him. No, you jumped right back into it. Oh, this is gonna be a grasshopper video now. <sighs> He's jumping around, but he needs to get clean from the smoothie. Okay, now you'll be clean. Now you can go in the sun and dry off and live a happy life. Okay. So. Let's 
<laughs> Come back. Come back to the video. But how many of us will actually achieve our desire? What determines our satisfaction or dissatisfaction with life? What determines our success or failure? What constitutes the meaning, meaning of life for every, for each and every man? And for all mankind on the whole? And man is also derived from men and women, by the way. So for each and every man, that includes men and women. What kind of future awaits us? These questions have been around a long time, but nobody has managed to come up with an intelligible answer. But I wonder, what kind of country will we be living in five or ten years from now? What kind of world are we leaving to our children? We really don't know, and let's face it, none of us can ever picture our own future because we are always hurrying off somewhere, but to where? Strange but true, the first clear glimpse I have ever had about the future of our country came not from statistics or politicians, but from Anastasia, a recluse living in the wilds of the taiga. And not only did she present a picture of a marvelous future, but showed step by step its feasibility even for our generation, a design, in fact, for the development of the whole country. It was while I was on my way from Anastasia's glade to the river that this firm conviction, for some reason, came to my thought. Her plan is capable of changing so much in this world of ours. When we consider that everything her thought conceptualizes inevitably turns into a real-life embodiment, we see we are already living in a country with only a splendid future ahead of it. And this is in Russia. As I walked along, I thought about what Anastasia had said about our country's splendid future. It's in Russia and it's all over the world. Because all over the world is land, also labeled as country. I thought about what Anastasia had said about our country's splendid future, which might even come about in our generation's lifetime. Yeah, it will be a country without religion regional conflicts, criminal gangs, and diseases, a country without poverty. And while I don't understand all the thoughts she came out with, there wasn't a single thing she said that this time I felt like doubting. On the contrary, I felt as though I wanted to show everyone how right she was. I firmly resolved to do everything within my power to bring her plan to fruition. On the surface, it seemed simple enough. Each family should be allotted a hectare of land which is like 2.5 acres to 3 acres or something. Every family should be allotted a hectare of land, a land for lifetime use whereon to step up, to set up its own kin's domain, its own piece of the motherland. But my thought was immersed in the details of this plan. They were utterly simple in themselves, and yet at the same time, utterly incredible. Amazing. It isn't an agricultural scientist, but a recluse woman from the taiga that has shown that, with the right planting arrangement on a plot of land, it can take just a few short years to dispense with the need for fertilization. Not only that, but even soil that isn't terribly fertile will be significantly improved. As a basic example, Anastasia referred to the situation in the taiga. The taiga has been around for thousands of years and everything grows in it, even though it has never been fertilized. Anastasia says that all the things growing in the earth constitute the materialized thought of God and that he has arranged everything so that man has no need to worry about difficulties in finding food. One needs only to try to understand the Creator's thought and create splendid things together with Him. I can cite an example of my own. The island of Cyprus, which I have visited, has a very rocky soil, but the ground wasn't always this way. Centuries ago, the island was home to some splendid cedar forests and orchards, and its many rivers were filled with the purest spring water. The whole island was like an earthly paradise. Then the Roman legions invaded the island and began to cut down the cedars to build their ships. Sheeps. 
whole groves were felled. Today, the larger part of the island is covered with stunted growth. The grass looks burnt even in the springtime. Summer rains are a rarity and there is not enough fresh water. The residents have had to import fertile soil and by the barge load to be able to grow anything at all. So the upshot, it's not only has man failed to improve what he has been created on the island, but his barbarous interference has actually made things worse. In outlining her plan, Anastasia said that it was essential to plant a family tree and that people should not be buried in a cemetery, but right there on the beautiful terrain they themselves have nurtured. No headstone of any kind need be placed on the grave. It is a man's living creations, not something dead that will serve as a memorial for his relations. And not only that, but his soul will be able to take on a material embodiment again in his earthly garden of paradise. People buried in the cemetery cannot end up in paradise. Their souls cannot be embodied in matter as long as there are relatives and friends around thinking about their death. Headstones are monuments to death. Funeral rites were thought up by the dark forces for the purpose of confining at least temporarily the human soul. Our Father, God, has never produced any kind of suffering or even grieving for his beloved children. All God's creations are eternal, self-sufficient, self-reproducing. Everything living on the earth, from the outwardly simple blade of grass to man, is a self-constituted, harmonious, and eternal whole. Here too, I think she's right. Just look at how things have turned out. Today, scientists tell us that human thought is material. But if that's the case, it means that the deceased person's relatives, in thinking of him as dead, thereby keeping on holding him in a, dis in a deadened state, which torments his soul. Anastasia maintains that man, or more precisely, man's soul, can live forever. It has the capacity con to constantly re-embody itself anew, but only under certain conditions. These conditions are brought about by a kin's domain, established according to Anastasia's design. I am simply a believer in this design. As to proving or disproving her claims about life and death, I'll leave that to the esoteric scholars who are no doubt more qualified for the task. I say, you're going to get a lot of opposition on that one, I observed to Anastasia, to which she only laughed and replied, it will all happen very simply now, Vladimir. Man's thought is capable of materializing and changing the shape of objects. Predetermining events, creating the future. So it works out that any opponents who try to argue for the frailty of man's existence only end up destroying themselves, for they will bring about their own decease by their very thoughts. Those who are able to comprehend their purpose and the meaning of infinity will start to live a happy life, eternally re-embodying themselves, for they themselves will produce with their thought their own infinity of happiness. I liked your plan even better when I began to calculate its economical potential. I have become convinced that any man with the help of a family domain he establishes according to Anastasia's design can ensure a poverty-free existence for himself as well as for his children and grandchildren. It is not merely a question of providing one's children with good food to eat or a roof over their heads. Anastasia said that the fence around the domain must be made of living trees and bushes and that at least a quarter of the hectare should be given over to forest. That means about 300 trees. They'll quite likely be cut down, say 80 to 100 years, yielding about 400 cubic meters of lumber. Even today, lumber, lumber well dried and processed for furnishing fetches at least $100 per cubic meter. And this was written a while ago. Meaning a total income of $40,000. Of course, one shouldn't cut down the whole forest at once, just the number of mature trees that are needed at the time and then immediately plant new ones in their place. The overall value of a kin's domain set up accordingly to Anastasia's design may be estimated at a million dollars or more, and any family can build one, even those with an average income. The house can be quite modest to start with. The main treasure will be the plot of ground, 
accurately and aesthetically laid out. Even today, wealthier citizens are paying big money to firms specializing in landscape design. There are about 40 such firms in Moscow right now, and they are always busy. For upwards of 1,500, they will take just the 100 square meters of ground around your house and turn it into a landscape design with detailed accuracy and aesthetic beauty. It costs around $500 to plant a single conifer about six meters high. The people who want to live in beautifully appointed surroundings are willing to pay big money for that. They end up paying it because it never entered their parents' heads to establish a family domain for their children. You don't need to be rich to do something like that. You need only to get your priorities straight. How can we raise our children properly if we ourselves don't grasp such simple things? Anastasia is right when she says the education begins with ourselves. I myself have a strong desire to establish my own family domain, to take a hectare of land, build a house, and most importantly, to put in all sorts of plantings around it. So, this is up to page six on book five. And if you're still with me and you listen to that, cheers. Cheers to us who are here to create a new earth, a new family way of life. <laughs> to do this for not only ourselves, but our next generations to come. May the light and love within your heart be with you and guide you. And if you're watching this, <laughs> there's so much beautiful things happening on the planet right now. And let me just tell you right now, there's so much land and there are so many of us gathering together and co-creating these family kin domains <sighs> and living in happiness and truth and love the way that our father and our mother intended us the divine father and divine mother intended us to live here eternally forever we are sons and daughters of God so I hope this brings your dream to life as much as it dream brings my dream to life because together we're dreaming we're dreaming together yes we are and <sighs> what a beautiful image huh I mean Anastasia and the Ringing Cedars book series by Vladimir Migre. Has completely changed my life. And yeah, just about every video that I will ever share here will speak about this movement because this is this is what's next. Where the world is it's great. The world as we know it in these cities is falling apart. It needs to fall apart in order for us to create a new and with that being said do your best to understand that not everybody here incarnated right now is here to create the new we are all perfect and divine we are all having our own experience from our own perspective and point of view and learning the lessons that we came here to learn. And there are all sides of the spectrum. So do your best to walk in compassion, love, be the love that you wish to see in the world and take your traumas and wounds and see them for what they are feel it do your meditation do your daily coming into your heart and taking all your feelings and what am I feeling it's all a reflection so until that reflection is a beautiful image 
it'll it, it starts within first so know that we're collectively doing this there's all the energies the etheric energies the, the things that we do not see with these two eyes oh the amount of magic that we are that we came here to remember focus on that focus there all is divine all is perfect take a deep breath in <sighs> and let it out melt into that and so it is i am that i am we are that we are we are love we are light we are sons and daughters of god and we are here to do this and experience this yes